Good morning, good morning. Thank you for joining me on this beautiful Monday. It is absolutely gorgeous outside. And what better day to talk about how gorgeous it is outside than a day of golf cart topics. I've been avoiding this for quite some time, mainly because the the topics, the laws surrounding golf carts were very diverse. We're all over the place, some here, some not, some age, some this. And uh, I tell you right now, they made it very simple. So there are a growing numbers, growing number, I can't talk this morning for some reason, growing number of communities in Central Florida that are adopting the whole golf cart thing. There's some that official, unofficially do, uh, accept it. So the city of Orlando is putting together some information on how they are going to tackle this great project on educating people. So I asked one of uh, the local city commissioners if they'd be willing to get in with me to talk about this, and they said yes right away. Uh, Commissioner Robert Stewart covers the area of the Baldwin Park area, the College Park area, a lot of different um, So I'm trying to get in here, let's see. Three, zero, three, there we go. And uh, gonna have the city commissioner pop it, hop in the car with me real quick and uh, talk about a little bit of what we do here and uh, what the city is gonna be doing on the new rules, the new education, the new enforcement side of it, especially for a lot of the communities that may not, uh, not necessarily think they're doing anything wrong. So, welcoming in this morning, Commissioner Robert Stewart, hopping in with me right now. Hop on in, sir. Hey, how are you? Good. Oh, look at this. Got some water for me. Appreciate you, boss. You're way taller than I am, so I this uh, should be fitting for I you. I gotta climb into this thing. Yeah. So you can close the glove box. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, welcome to Results One. Thanks. Yeah, we're Click live it. right like now. It, man. Yeah, ClickOrlando.com, News Six Plus, and the News Six app. We teased that you were going to be here with us uh, during the 9 a.m. show and the morning show, talking about something I have been avoiding for a very long time, <laughs> and that is the topic of golf carts. I know you and I have had a lot of conversations with them and stuff before, uh, but first, a little rundown of the car. So we are streaming live. Mike is here. Anything we say is picked up. Anything. Uh, got a camera here. Got a camera there. Forward facing. In the back. All that fun stuff. Uh, and yeah, we'll just hit the road and drive around College Park a little bit, if you don't right. mind. Fine with me. Awesome. Buckle up and uh, we'll get out. So I have to buckle up? You have to buckle up. So funny <laughs> thing is, um, right when I first got Results 1 up and running, my one of my first big interviews was with a Brevard County uh, school resource officer. And their sheriff's office, they wear attack vests, all that stuff. And they're a little unique because they have an assault rifle actually attached to their vest at the schools. Can barely see it if you're not looking for it. Big dude gets in my car. 35 minutes I'm talking to this gentleman. And we're just cruising around the school and stuff. Bing, bing. I get to my phone, probably 22 text messages. Steve, you're going to tell that deputy to put a seatbelt on? I was just like, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm still getting used to the live thing. It was so bad. It was so bad. I felt horrible. Oh, that's uh, funny. It was it was pretty it was good, but I'm still getting used to that's all this stuff. So sir, I appreciate it. I know you're a busy man. City of Orlando's always got something going on. Well, not too busy to spend time with you. I well, oh look at you oh, being all kind. So sir, talk to me a little bit about you before we jump into this golf cart thing because your district encompasses a lot of what I feel is quote unquote golf cart friendly. Uh, no real ordinances or rules, just friendly to it and everyone kind of looks back. What kind of growth have you seen here in Orlando? You became a commissioner when? In 2006. 2006, here we are, 2023. I'm sure your district looks com almost completely different. A little different. Uh, you know, when I, when I joined Baldwin Park, it, had, had just uh, really started to be to grow and so for the next five or six years Baldwin Park was really in, in, in the midst of heavy growth okay and then now in the last five years heavy growth has been at Lake Nona so we've seen these areas uh, 
sprout up and, and do really what we would call really end growth. Okay. But that's been the real growth in my district. Now, I, my district covers everything from from Rosemont, Signal Hill, and Rose Rosemont, all the way across north of Highway 50, with few exceptions, all the way over to Baldwin Park. So, as I tell my my friends, I have 50,000 of my closest friends in my district. Right. Yeah. It's it's a great. I would say one of the my favorite districts because that's where I like to frequent. A uh, lot of stores, yeah, good shopping, good shopping, yeah. good eating, all have, mixed within the residents right there. Three or more, three or four main streets in our area, which we devote to to uh, small business development and, and commercial districts. Um, and your your district's getting ready to grow. The packing district's yours, right? Yes. So that's going to be that's that's the next stage of growth that we'll see. So as like Mona continues to grow, packing district now going to step up, and we end up will having probably. Housing for about thirty-five or thirty-six hundred wow. units over there. Um, That's not a so, small number. No, and uh, and it's the good news is it's a lot of infill, so it's we see a lot of apartments, we see a lot of condos, we see a lot of townhomes, um, and it's because there's not enough room to do single-family homes over right, there. So right. it's good to see that kind of growth, and that's also going to spur the commercial portion of that. Right. So we see the commercial district, there's new Publix going in, a Foxtail. Uh, a couple other retail stores. Now, do you see there. with this very, so it's like almost land, I, I don't know all these terms, so I use very generic terms, very landlocked communities that are self-sufficient. I, I look at that they're being built. So like you have everything you need. I'm sure there's a technical term for it. Uh, that within these communities, do you see the, that more people are gonna wanna stay within their communities. I think so. I mean, what, what we're finding is that the traffic in Orlando is awful because we have, you know, 4.3 million people in Central Florida. Right. And, and it's just, and we've never adequately addressed the future of traffic needs. We're always kind of one step behind, and I think Orlando may be two or three steps behind. And so um, uh, so now what you end up with is a couple of things that, that, that are impacting that. So we're seeing a lot of these small, you know, Ivanhoe District, right. uh, Ivanhoe Village District is, it's gotten a couple of three of those. The yard, mm -hmm. um, uh, the, uh, the the broad the broadstone, or I think you know, it's gotten this change to say change their name. But the, those areas over there, and you're seeing a restaurant group um, support. You're seeing uh, retail establishments support. Uh, you're seeing the same thing over in Audubon in my district, and the same thing in College Park. And College Park has always had a real strong identity, right? Um, and so we haven't had a lot of that building. We uh, that kind of multi-family building so we're seeing a lot of that i think will come from packing district in the college park because they're just so close to each other so with that comes people choosing different modes of transportation right we've got all these autonomous style things coming out which i think are amazing um, especially once they start growing into communities and they start proving the concept a little bit i think more people will start using them you see scooters all over the place, which I will reserve my opinion on uh, scooters, <laughs> and because we are here to talk about the growth of golf carts. Um, one of the first discussions you and I had, almost probably a year and a half ago, was you coming up to me and going, "When are you going to educate people on <laughs> this golf on golf carts?" Yeah, and I was you. like, "I was like, well, Commissioner, nice to meet you yeah, too. Like, why, why is it taking a year and a half? Yeah, what, well, what is your problem? It's, it's, my problem was the law." <laughs> And having people explain it, and me having to explain it, and then the kickback, and then I just held my breath just a little long enough for them to really simplify things for the entire state of Florida, and that's the main reason why you're here with me. I'm not sure they simplified it, but well, I think in have, a way they have made it a little bit easier to understand. To and understand, that's the case. and uh, while when we talk about what the city of Orlando is going to be doing, what the law now says. I will try to break in and kind of clear cut it between public property and private property. A lot of people think, oh, well, if I'm just driving down the road of my neighbor's house, that's good to go. Well, do you own all that property that's leading up to that? So a little bit, if you want to dive in what the city uh, has well, learned. Let's, let's start with golf carts, first let's of all. Let's talk with golf carts. Go for it. Because golf carts on a golf course is essentially private property. Correct. So people jump on a golf course. It's great. That, and... and that's really all designed to be around private property. Right. A lot of people don't realize those golf carts are not privately owned. These right. are owned and operated by the private company. Right. Right. And they're owned and operated only for the use on their property. That's And generally, it's controlled by insurance. This They're, they're used this way. 
And there are many occasions where these private courses don't even allow private golf carts to be on there okay. because, because they control it from the insurance standpoint. But the general thing I was sharing with a, a neighbor association, there are things that are golf carts and there's things that look like golf carts that the, that the state of Florida doesn't define as a golf <laughs> right. cart. Um, right. So uh, they, those, they, the state calls those slow speed vehicles. Mm-hmm. And slow speed vehicles are allowed on any state road or any road in the state of Florida as long as they have some criteria. Proper slow marking. speed vehicles yep. have to be, have, have proper equipment. Um, um, left turn, sig- I mean, uh, turn signals, uh, headlights, uh, windshield wipers, um, brake lights, um, some things like that. Um, golf carts typically don't have that. Um, and so what you end up with is a, is a bunch of these um, uh, golf cart things that are around. Now, now, the other challenge that you have is that slow speed vehicles is a vehicle and it's a licensed vehicle with a VIN number right. in the state of Florida. And you want slow speed vehicles. Um, and they and they are great for where you use them. In the state of Florida, you can't be on any uh, road at the, greater than 35 miles an hour. You can't ride in the bike lane. It's against the law to ride in the bike lane. You can't right. ride on the sidewalk. It's a well, let's talk about that though. Things. Why okay. can't you ride in the bike lane? Because it's, it's a, not bike, a bike lane. Because it's a bike lane. <laughs> <laughs> so and many people are like, well, it's a bike lane. Why can't I just use it? Well, because it's a bicycle it's a bike lane. lane. Right. It's That's a it. bike lane. So. Our goal in the city is to do two things. First of all, get these golf carts that we see around the neighborhoods, get them to become legal. Okay. Okay. Um, How would, what's step one to do something like that? Well, you got to go to a vendor, first of all, and you got to add all the things that you've got there. We're, we're putting down a, a, a three month warning cycle where we're trying okay. to go to people and say, look, here's what you have to do to make it legal. If you don't make it legal, you can't get a license. If you can't get a license, you can't get insurance. You now have a problem because now you're driving a vehicle illegally on the city roads. The irony of all this is I can own a golf cart and I can have it in my driveway. Right. Um, and it's nothing's illegal about that. Right, because why? Because, because it's, it's on your, private It's on your <laughs> private property. property. The moment I back out into the street, it now becomes an illegal vehicle. Yes, sir. And so now you have to do is figure out what to do. Now here's I've got an extra badge. I think I'm gonna troopertize you, <laughs> troopertize you right here in the truck. <laughs> I had a lot of discussions about this. So the other thing is this: if you're driving an illegal vehicle, your car insurance doesn't cover anything with what you're doing. Correct. Your homeowner's does. So you have an accident in a a, um, a, a golf cart that's illegal guys are coming after your house because that's where your assets are right um, and if you have a proper authorized vehicle that's properly insured then you have proper insurance for that now I'll tell you that what got me all hepped up about this is two things the first is I see 10 or 12 year old kids running around the neighborhood in a golf cart usually with a bunch of their friends and it usually is five or six or seven people in because they're going from place to place. Coming down a road just like this. We're on Westmoreland right exactly. now. And they, they, they would just be out here like a normal they car. They think it's just cute and it's fun and isn't that great? Um, and parents allow them to do that. That scares me to death because I think somebody's gonna get hurt, seriously. And the second thing, when I started doing some research, I found out that in an accident in which a golf cart is involved nationwide, 48% of the people go to the hospital. Okay. Preaching facts okay. over here. So they don't. When you have an accident, it's like the same kind of issue when you have an accident with a motorcycle. You have a high number that go to the hospital. Right. And, and you don't because want that. Because there is an, you're playing a 50-50 shot. Right. Of some type of injury occurring. Exactly. Whether it be minor or deadly. Right. And so I can't imagine having a 12-year-old child who gets, who runs a stop sign because they're not paying attention. And then having them get hit and go to the hospital because they wanted to go spend time with their friend. Right. Um, that can be avoided, and it can be avoided by a couple of things. Now, the state of Florida has added a little bit of confusion, and the rule that the law they just added was, if your community allows golf carts, so that's a big one, if it allows golf carts, then the driver must be 18 years or older and licensed. Okay. Now, okay. City of Orlando doesn't allow golf carts, so, it does, so that law doesn't apply to us. There are people who have come to us and said, wait a second, I'm a licensed driver, I can drive in City of Orlando. The answer is you can't drive an illegal vehicle any place in the state of Florida. Right. And we don't legalize golf carts. So you need two parties in order to agree on it. You need, well, no, excuse me, you don't. You need, 
no matter what, you would need the city of Orlando to file an ordinance allowing it. Right. But even then, for that golf cart to be operated on the roadway, it would need 18 to be... 18-year-old. 18-year-old. Right. But it would also need to be street legal. No. The st state says I can do golf carts, but you have to have an 18-year-old driver. That's and a speed limit says. that is right. below... And also, the state says, and there's these called slow-speed vehicles. Right. And a slow-speed vehicle, by the way, you can be 16 years old and drive as long as you have an adult beside you because it's a regular vehicle. vehicle. Right. And the 16-year-old can drive that. But it. if it's a golf cart, you can't be a 16-year-old and drive in the state of Florida. Now, that applies to places like um, uh, the Villages. It applies to places, the state law that applies to places like the Villages, a lot of beach communities where they allow golf carts. Okay. So in those areas... You can't be under the age of 18 and drive. Orlando doesn't allow golf carts. Okay, so that's my next follow-up question. For anybody here watching in the city of Orlando that's watching us right now or going to watch this, let's be clear, Where what is the city of Orlando's stance when it comes to golf carts? We don't allow golf carts. Period. Period. Done. And no of place. sense on a public road like we're on right now, right. a golf cart would not be allowed to drive right here in College Park. Correct. It, it, don't care if you have a driver's license, don't care if you're 100 or 20 years old, this would not be allowed. Correct. Not in the, now, you can then make a slow speed vehicle, then you have to obey the law. Right. And the law is you can be on under, and then you, and they're kind of neat. I mean, you can go around the neighborhood, but you're, you're properly, um, it's a proper vehicle. Now, a good clue about that is that when you see somebody, they have a license tag on the back. Ding. Ding. So the license tag means it's a legal vehicle and it's insured. That's how you can, the only way you can get it. I talked to Scott Randolph. He gave me the same information. Now, I can't answer for Winter Park. I can't answer for Unincorporated Orange County. I can't right. answer other cities. I think they're all generally the same. So if you're in Winter Park, you may want to call the Winter Park Traffic Department and say, can I drive a golf cart on this yeah, road? Has the city issued an ordinance? Exactly, why not? exactly. And there are some cities who have done that. We, the city of Orlando, has chosen not to do that because we've got so many different types of organization of, of roads and so many different types. We have 121 miles of roads, so yeah, we we have to figure out how we're going to. I'm glad you these. answered that because a lot of people would be like, "Well, why is the city saying no?" Yeah. Well, let's think about it in actuality. We deal with tragic crashes every day as it is, and then we're going to mix. Like we're in the middle of a residential street yeah. in between a major highway and two major roads. And next thing you know, you'd have somebody's like, I'm just going to run to Publix real quick. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Let me cross Edgewater or Orange Blossom Trail in my golf cart and then getting hit at 45 to 60 miles an hour. That's end game. And the other thing I just don't, I mean, I, I personally, I don't still understand it. Okay. Uh, and the reason is because you're, you're going, you can't go more than 25 miles an hour. Now, a slow speed vehicle in the state of Florida has to be able to go no greater than 25 miles an hour. That's one of the rules. Okay. Um, so you can't soup up a, 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 a slow speed vehicle to make it go 35 or 40 miles an hour. Right. It can only go 25. But the Top state speed, says, right. okay, if you're going 35 mile an hour zone, we're going to allow 25 mile an hour vehicles to be on there. That's what the state says. So, and then re in return, they're allowing impeding of traffic to occur to an extent to an if extent. they're allowing that vehicle exactly. out there. Exactly. But they're allowing it only at a max. In other words, if a golf cart has been governed down to go 12 miles an hour, it can't be a slow speed vehicle. Right. A slow speed vehicle has to go 25 because we don't want. So we're talking capability. Down. Yeah. It has to have the capability of reaching those right. speeds. Wow. So I see it. I, you know, my personal opinion is it, it's like driving a vehicle. So why don't you just go get a small? If your concern is parking and those kind of things, go get a small car and, and park. Nowadays, you can go to the shoe store yeah. by but you turn around car. tomorrow and you'll have guys that'll spend three to eight thousand dollars on a golf cart when um, you can get a fully functioning vehicle that's the same size or you can spend another thousand and upgrade it properly and use it properly and drive it properly all the city wants is if you we want legalized vehicles to be driven properly so right. the assumption is if you're a legalized vehicle then you're you're driving you're 16 to 18 years old you know what the you know what the laws are here's how you drive it I've got a guy who's down on um, north of uh, Edgewater Drive and lives in the county. And every day he drives his golf cart down um, Edgewater Drive in the, in the cart path. And when it gets busy, he jumps up on the sidewalk, which is a five foot sidewalk, to drive all the way down to um, downtown College Park to get coffee at Starbucks to drive all the way back. And I thought to myself, okay. <laughs> He gets it's cringy. It's cringy. Hit. It scares me to death. 
Now, here's the cop's problem. They can only address behavior. Right. So a cop can't pull up to a house that has a golf cart in front of it and say, okay, you can't drive that. Now, we could give them a warning and do some things. That's where our plan is to okay. do it. But we can't give them a ticket because the golf cart's legal. Right. And we can't give a ticket based upon intent any more than we can give a ticket to you saying that oh, I know you're going to speed on Edgewater Drive. Correct. So I'm going to give you a ticket now. because right. Traffic you laws must be observed. We can only do behavior, which means we have to catch them, which means it's a 10 or 15 second opportunity going down the street, or it's a five minute opportunity, and you have to have a cop now catch them. So our goal is to is to take these three months and try to get the word out every time we see somebody. So you guys are gonna go through a big educational phase. We're gonna do education through Nextdoor and social media. We've got some flyers that, we, that we're that we gonna pass out. I think I sent you a couple, but we got some flyers that shows you what a slow speed vehicle is. And then on the back shows you how to upgrade yours to a slow speed vehicle. So you guys can see that pretty clearly right now. The city of Orlando, nice little pamphlet. This is the stuff they're gonna be pushing out. Social media, the commissioner's saying, uh, Nextdoor app, if you don't have the Nextdoor app, when it's not a plug, no one's getting any commercial money out of it. Great app, I've got it. And then on the back, it will have a list on how you can make, nice little checklist, what you should have on your vehicle in order to make it legal. And then of course, the Florida statues next to it, because Lord knows there is always somebody. Well, what law says this? Well, it's right there. And yeah. the city of Orlando, I like this because it's clean, it's clear, and it's obviously not a ticket, right? right? You guys, and we stole the idea from Delray. I mean, I, I, a year ago, I was in Del, Delray Beach, and there were golf carts everywhere. And and I'm, as you know, every were time you I seizing see out, <laughs> yeah, <it's> like ah. <laughs> my wife, my wife thought she was gonna, I was gonna have a heart attack every time I'd see one. I would stop, I'd look behind. Does that have a license tag? I'd go, and then I was talking to my brother-in-law at the time and said, you know, what you, I hate these golf carts forever. I said, okay, fine, fine, fine. Well, about six months later, I go back down there and I couldn't find an illegal vehicle. Now, I did see a bunch of things that looked like golf carts. Okay. All of them were licensed. All of them were using the road properly. Um, and now I, I think that in many cases, these vehicles can hold up traffic and, and can be dangerous if they're, if they're driven improperly. But the state allows it. Right. So I, I can't... I can't come back to the state and say, okay, you know, kick it off. You know, you, you, you can't do this anymore. But right, I, like, I don't like Honda Civics. Doesn't mean no Honda Civics out the road. I'm exactly. just joking, joking, joking. <laughs> but what we found out was when I went back down through Del Rey, everybody had a license tag. And so I thought this so was So you're like, unusual. something's happening down here. So I called the, the, called the chief down there and, and talked to the, the patrol captain and said, what'd you do? And he said, well, we did this. We went, we did three months of education and then we started giving away tickets. And the tickets are $247. Cha-ching. They're going to they're gonna find real fast about how to make fix this. I went, well, whatever you did, it worked. And so we stole their idea, went to Martin County. And what stole. was the time lapse between the first time you went down there? About six months. That's pretty fast yeah. behavior yeah. kind of. Now thing. some cars, uh, some golf uh, <clears throat> vehicles or slow speed vehicles, they're already legal. All you Correct. gotta do is go get a license. Almost like on. when Celebration first opened, the right. Nevs, they were everywhere and it was the coolest thing and they all yeah. had license plates. And but and some but some some are legal but don't have license plates. It's a matter of now getting license tag and insurance. Okay. Which is okay. Some are just not illegal at all. And so uh, are, are, are illegal completely. And so what you have to now do is go make those legal. And that requires some effort and requires some cost. And and it's it's a cost that is greater you don't understand it until you realize that you, you spent twenty five hundred dollars for a used golf cart, and now you're gonna have to go spend another two or three thousand to make it legal. And the answer is, yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> and you like, could have yes, spent six thousand for one that was already legal. Right. Um, uh, so yeah, you're right. You're, you think you got a really good deal, and you think you'll get away with it. It's like I was staring at my the other day. It's like remember those old four wheel go karts that you used to have, and, and when we were growing up there because there's one right there. Yep. Um, those four-wheel golf carts, and uh, um, uh, and I mean, and, and go karts. And what you would do is you would end up going down the road, up and down the road as fast as you can, and uh, because you had a golf cart. And the answer is yeah. My trooper well, driving's kicking in because right. I want to catch yeah. this golf cart on camera. Yeah. And that golf cart, I mean that go kart on your road, even though it's a nice little cute go go kart really is illegal because right. of the, because it's got a motor, it's got four wheels. I mean, so you, we all kind of turned a blind eye to it because you're only going up and down the street. Imagine taking that same go-kart and deciding you want to go grocery shopping with it. 
you'd go, are you nuts? Why would you ever do that? It's a car. It's you're right. Like, you're right. So the same it, thing. It's the ideology behind. Oh, it's just around the corner. But then if it's just around the corner, next thing you know, you're going right further and, and further. You wouldn't go that way because what? You sit too low. People can't see you. It's dangerous. That's what the state of Florida says. Same thing we say about golf carts. If you're not, if you don't have brake lights, if you don't have turn signals, you don't have the things that are supposed to be. Uh, that you're supposed to have, then you know what? It's it, it is not safe. It's not safe for the driver. It's not safe for people around it. So this golf cart up here that we're going to see in a second. What do you think? This, I don't know the cost. This is this is an expensive one. I would guess that one's probably about five uh, to seven. I would say seven to eight, maybe nine thousand dollars. And it's got fancy rims on it. Like people do take pride in it. They put all sorts of weird stuff on it. She's going to pull out, and we're going to follow right behind. Turning signals on it. Got turning signals. That that. That is nearly illegal, and all she's got to do, and she's driving illegally because she needs to drive in the vehicle, in the road. So yeah, no plate on it in the bike lane where it's not supposed to be. Right. Kids on it. There's no seatbelts on these things. I can't, well, you some can't do. Tell. You can't tell. Right. Yeah. But this would be illegally driving down the roadway. Right. So and she should be in the lane with us if she was a legal vehicle. Right. If she's doing anything right. like that. And I think she probably knew we were watching and got off. Get off the and, road. And it's turning back around to come back out here. Yeah. Which is the funniest thing about this. Yeah. It's like, this is the exact same stuff that we're trying to educate so people don't do. And look, I, I know a lot of people watching are probably like, man, you guys, really, this is a big deal. I have, Commissioner, I have worked nasty crashes, whether fatal or children, seniors in the villages. Uh, and they have infrastructure set up in that area. They have full-blown travel lanes that allow for it, and yet they're still dealing with the stuff that we would we deal with here in the city, whether right, it's in right. Seminole County, Osceola County. I, so many people underestimate the whole golf cart thing, and I think if they, I always preach the pause. When you take, you're about to do something a little weird, pause and think, yeah. uh, what does this look like right now? She just crossed over. Uh, over the roadway, over into the other college park area. I love being avoided in results work. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> some days you're avoided, and some days you're not. Right, right. and it's kind of yeah. funny because yeah. people see the truck and they're like, oh, I know I'm doing something bad, and then they don't want to get caught doing it. But this is the side stuff that I was looking for earlier because a lot of people think traveling on these small roadways, it's okay. When it's not, and it's like, this is, once they're out here, this is the illegal fact. Right. You could be technically charged with a DUI. You, you could get charged with a DUI on a bicycle. You can, in some cases, a grown adult driving out here, depending on oh, don't harass her now. the totality of the circumstances, <laughs> and doesn't stop at the, at the stop sign. Right. So the commissioner does not want me to harass the, uh, <laughs> the driving around golf cart person. So my point has been proven. And I'm going to make a left here to move on from the golf cart person because I can see the commissioner starting to cringe. Well, <laughs> Through here, the edge, here's the, I'm all about here's throwing people part. out there. Okay, so here's the <laughs> interesting part: 13 year old steals a car and or takes his parents' car and gets caught. Okay, the state of Florida can actually step in and the 13 year old and and not allow the 13 year old to get a license. Yes, yes. Uh, I wish that would happen. Yeah. So much more. people don't people don't understand that yeah. that the, the judicial system you go twenty one you're yeah. waiting yeah if that and, happened oh. well the same thing happens now on golf carts what we're going to do is we're going to end up with, we'll find a twelve or thirteen year old we'll go back to their parents we'll cite the twelve or thirteen year old they're going to have to now go explain to a judge why they're driving this illegal vehicle and the judges has the judge has the opportunity and the potential to say okay I understand. You should have known better. You knew what the driving was. Parents, you should have known better. Here's what we're going to do. She can't get her license until she's 21. Now, I... I would I'm cringe sure as a kid. I'm, I'd be flipping out. I'm not sure it's worth it. I mean, you know... But, but in the old days, my bicycle. I'm not riding a golf cart if that's exactly, the case. Exactly, exactly. But even so, my point is that you can... Too close to the stop sign. Really? Within 30 yeah. feet? I'm that's so surprised. Oh, sarcasm and it's fine. I love it. <laughs> you need to we come do not, traffic with me in the morning. <laughs> we should not do this together. <laughs> I promise you. This is This is why not. I'm making it back to dropping you off because we're almost about done here to where we're going to start goofing <laughs> off. But. <laughs> but no, like, I think that having that, I think as knowledge, because like as a kid, my biggest fear 
was never paying my insurance because I didn't want that FR suspension. If I knew that my local judicial system was as serious as my mom was by saying, don't do something, and they started saying, hey, if we catch you, you're not going to get your license to 21, Commissioner, I wouldn't even look at a golf cart. I wouldn't play golf <laughs> because I'd be so terrified. I would, yes, I would too. And I was the same way. I, and now, you know, we are in a different society now, but the point of the matter is we, all we want is people to be safe. Yes. So if, if you're driving a vehicle legally, then we assume you have a license, you've passed the test, and you have proper insurance, and everybody is, feels a little bit safer. But if you go the other way around, um, uh, then you, you have a little bit of a, uh, a little bigger problem. Right. Um, so. Well, because you get, I don't know, it's the whole, it's kids getting behind, or just younger adults, uh, youth, that there is no formal training. It, this could be tied to a million different topics. Yeah. That just because you have the right to something, maybe you should educate yourself before you start Taking well, you can imagine uh, when I see adults like this lady who just had her three kids. She's driving, probably it's it's a, it's probably a pretty much of a, of, a, of a legal vehicle, and she's got three kids in, and they're all properly sitting. I would imagine if we were to get close enough, they probably had seatbelts on. Right. So the adult is taking the responsibility. She's just not driving it as a legal vehicle. Right. She, she just missed she, a few. She steps. doesn't understand. So we have to help educate her, um, and so. You put a 12-year-old there. And, and they're got, skipping all the other stuff. And I'm telling you, I, down on my street, there was one that would come by almost twice a day, uh, especially in the afternoon. Six girls all jumping in, um, four sitting, two standing, and they're going down the middle of the road. And they are laughing and giggling, and they're all 13 or 14 years old. Um, and there's no maliciousness behind no, it. It's, it's just, just carelessness. It's carelessness because they don't... They don't understand. They haven't taken, you know, they've, they've, they've learned enough of the traffic laws from their parents to go six blocks. But six blocks <laughs> past a, a, a stop sign. Right. Six, six blocks on public roads. Can be anything. Exactly. Um, that's right. why they call them accidents. So. Uh, I would say accidents lead to crashes. So, and that's kind of a big thing in my, in my side of the house. It's like. People don't realize the little things that they're doing that ultimately lead to bigger things. Most fatal crashes, stats show, and heck, the fatals I've worked, two to five miles to someone's house mm. because the brain starts to shut off. And I cannot imagine, even as we drive through the future of the expansion of your district here, or the filling of your district, like it could even get even worse out here. I would love to have a slow speed vehicle if I lived in one of these self-sufficient districts. Yeah. I live up in Seminole County. I'd have I'd, I'd need like six batteries yeah. to get to my Publix yeah. if I was using a golf cart. Well, and as an example, this this riding a slow speed on here would be illegal. Right. We're going to have a path on here. The path is not allowed for a vehicle, a, a, a slow speed vehicle. You can put a bicycle on there. You can put a a, a low um, um, horsepower uh, scooter on there. Right. But it's not a it's not for a vehicle. Uh, and so you on the road we're on right now, we well, you couldn't have it. But you can cross it. So the idea is that you could, in at the packing district, you could have a golf cart and then you could cross this 45 mile an hour road to go down to 30 mile an hour Princeton to go down to the Publix, which is, that's great. Just, just do it legally is all I'm asking people to do. Would there be a designated crossing? Do you think, is that uh, an idea in the works for those if type you, of vehicles no, out if here? No, if you're going, if you if you're on a road, then you're then that's you'd the have crossing. to right. You have that's, to use the proper intersection. That's the cross. I just know I I love the super friendly markings within the city. I think we take care of the roads pretty good within our area, marking them, and I love the designated buses bus lanes downtown. Uh, even though cars every now and then do their own thing down there, or the bike lanes. Bike lanes here in the city super clear. You know what is a bike lane. So I just wasn't I knew, up in the villages occasionally. Wow, this individual next to us is literally taking part in uh, token up right there behind the wheel. <laughs> he, I just saw him roll, finish rolling that and uh, light it up. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, smoking pot behind the wheel is against the law. Uh, and never smoke pot while you're driving a slow-speed vehicle. Yeah. So I'm, any, trying to, I'm trying to get could, you back. But, yeah, 
<laughs> Commissioner trying to reel me back in because I, you guys know, results want I'm in trooper mode and the news guy at the same time. Um, but right, there are every vehicle law applies to the golf carts, the slow me moving vehicles, whether you're under the influence of anything like that. So big. Big, huge thank you to you, sir. I know, slam busy. We've been trying to get this down on the books for a couple of days. Um, so over at clickorlando.com, this entire video will be posted there. We'll crop it down. Also, we will include links to the city of Orlando and their new graphics, uh, their flyers that they're gonna be handing out to everybody in order to educate before the enforcement comes. And people might be asking, well, what are the tickets? Well, the tickets will go with the same statutory basis of the clerk of the court. So you need to make sure you are completely aware of stuff like that. Uh, Commissioner, thank you for joining. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you. Enjoy it. I'll get you in here real quick. We still got our interior stuff, unless you have a fancy badge. Thing. I have a fancy little fob thing. A little fob thing. thing save me buttons. some time. Yeah. There you go. I live in a fancy place now. Oh, yeah. Huh? Awesome. Well, yeah. sir, I appreciate you very much. Thank you. Uh, you have a great day. Thank you, sir. And I appreciate you guys really educating before the enforcement stuff, because it was up to me. I'd get my black and tan out there <laughs> and just start writing a bunch of tickets. I know. So, so let me turn this camera around, shut the audio off. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys. Uh, go give the commissioner a follow. I posted them on my Instagram. Follow their account. They do a lot of great stuff there. And uh, pushing out just safety stuff. It's all about keeping you guys informed, because at the end of the day, the stuff you need, they implement. They look at it. And then they come back to you guys. So appreciate you all. Have a great day. And we'll talk to you soon.